Here I wanted to try chocolate brown so desperately. So I put on these chocolate brown boots and gosh, I love it. And what is more charming than a beautiful silvery gray with this blushy pink? How divine. What I've done, I've put over this Alana Hill coat and I wanted to have something patterned because everything is just so, even though we've got shimmer in this top, everything is just so flat in terms of the colour. So I wanted to add a little bit of drama. Uh, even with the ruffle and the shimmer, you know, we need a little bit of drama. So this pink coat with this skirt, divine. I've added a brown bag to tone in with the boots, but what I love is that they don't completely match. This is soft and more matte, it's a suede, and this is more patent and shiny and it's got a croc stamp on it. So I just love the different textures happening there. And um, look, 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 can you see how gorgeous? Underneath I have just an ecru top, which I'll show you in a moment, and then a vintage brooch in a gold. And I haven't matched my earrings with the brooch because I just love, I mean, I just love how it looks anyway, but I just love that it picks up on the skirt. That little glint of silver just picks up on the gray metallic of the skirt. And now with the coat actually on, now you can see that I, have just tucked up the top. So here it's just falling too long and it's making me look really short at the bottom. So I've just given a little tuck. This waistband is nothing to write home about and I don't want to put a belt on. I could, I'll play around with that later. But I've just folded it so it sits at a really nice spot. And uh, I actually don't mind the look there. I think it's long enough in the skirt to give me length to the bottom. So just play around with proportions of your tops and your skirts. And I'd probably button this anyway. You can even belt this coat, it's just stunning. Here I've just done the coat covering my little hole that <laughs> I in the skirt. And then with this I'd probably do a crossbody. Only because the coat is actually not that uh, form fitted at the waist. So again, going with the chocolate brown and going over the top like that. Ah, so gorgeous. And you could even, you know, go all the way up and have that little peak of the ecru at the top. You could uh, go halfway, you know, but it's just such a lovely look. And again, these colors together are so beautiful. And of course, toning in with everything are my fabulous pink sunnies. In fact, I could even put on that little brooch at the top here. Very sweet. One more. This beautiful Gant top, it's wool, it's just superb, it's classic, it's very Breton, you know, it has a gorgeous neckline, lovely and soft. I love actually both down, how cool is that, and up. You know, that's very Jean-Paul Gaultier, huh? And this is um, very tan. So I have this with, even though it's got cream in the stripe, I have this with a lovely bright white pair of jeans. And I wanted to show you, I tried several shoes with this and I wanted to show you uh, how different these jeans and the top can look with different shoes. So I'll show you that shortly. But what I've done is I've actually gone for pink. So I have this beautiful little pink crossbody from Mimco and a pink sunglass. And the reason I like these sunglasses is because they really have that retro feel. And I love tying in that sort of theme, you know? that sort of error um, and mixing it up with modern pieces. So I've French tucked, of course, but you'll notice that if you French tuck fully with jeans, depending of course on the, uh, you know, whether the top is more voluminous or whether it's fitted, and also depending on where your jeans are ending, if they're high rise. If they're high rise, they tend to disappear because they're the smallest part, of, or one of the smallest parts of your body. Uh, so what I would do, just to hide that button, because your eye just goes straight to that button, is I would side tuck. In fact, I'd probably do this side because I've got the bag there. And you'll notice how it just gives a whole other shape to an outfit like this. It really does. It helps define the waist and bring us in. Whereas if it was like this, you know, it's just so, so different. So yeah, I would tuck which side? <laughs> this side and I would cover le bouton and I'd just wear my bag like this. Now, on the shoes. So, I have several pairs of shoes. I did try some cream and bone colored shoes, but I actually much prefer white on white at the bottom here, particularly because I have cream here. 
If you have cream up the top, cream down the bottom, it's almost like it's a bit disparate, you know, it sort of makes things like you don't know where your eye's going. Whereas if you're all white on the bottom and then you've got more muted tones up the top, I just think it works better. And let me show you what I mean. So I have this Zara sneaker, it's just a white leather sneaker. I've espadrilled it, of course you could put it on fully, but I liked that espadrille look. It's more French, you know. And then I also had these two. So this is a bone colored ballet flat, and this is a uh, sort of like, I guess, a, a brogue, but it's just a mule. So one is warmer than the other. So let me show you when I put this little brogue mule on, I actually, this done sunlight, I hope you can see, I actually don't mind the shape with this. I think the shape works well. And I do kind of like how it ties in with the top, but I don't love it as much as the pure white. So that's why I've gone for the pure white, as I explained before. But I also wanted to explain this one. Now, this is a very long, petite, narrow shoe, and it's beautiful, but it's, it sort of makes the foot look smaller and longer. And to me, that uh, makes me look heavier around the middle and around the legs. I know that sounds bizarre, but hear me out. When we have a little bit of bulk, <laughs> as I do, um, or something voluminous on the top, if we had, like if I had a big voluminous jumper and skinny jeans and this tiny little shoe, you kind of end up looking top heavy and out of balance. But if you add, in this case, because especially I've got white jeans on, I want to sort of minimise the look of my thigh. So I put a larger shoe on the bottom. It's like a counterbalance to the rest of the outfit to have a shoe that's a little bit heavier and larger. Does that make sense? So there you go. I don't know if you can see that, but I certainly can when I look in the mirror. There you go, let's dress this up now. Of course, I had to finish with a La Pièce de Résistance, a Christian Dior coat. Yes, I know, you may have seen before, but yes. And I've authenticated it. Unbelievable at the salvos. Navy, heavy, stunning, beautiful. And I've gone a little bit equestrian here. So I've left those white jeans on and I've put over this divine tweed jacket. It's one of my favorite things I bought last year. And an equestrian style bag. A beautiful classic scarf that goes with this French Breton look. And I've also gone a little bit less over the top with the sunglasses because there's a lot going on here and there's a lot of heaviness, the heavy boot, the heavy tweed, the heavy bag, you know. I've just gone with a much lighter, more neutral sunglass. I think it works really well. Now, the only thing with this Christian Dior, sweetie darling, coat is that it's from the 80s. Or I'm presuming so anyway, I've dated it to the 80s and it has these massive, massive shoulder pads. So because this has a relatively decent sized shoulder pad, wait till you see what it looks like when I put this over the top. I am going to look like <laughs> a linebacker. Seriously, that's cray cray. There's no way. Even with shoulder pads being totally in right now, there is no way I would do this. It would just be horrid. So I would have to probably wear this over a shoulder padless top uh, and you know I'm already broad in the shoulder so I don't want to be looking like a linebacker. Let me try it without this tweed jacket underneath. Now of course I would have this down because underneath it doesn't really matter if I'm belting this thing. It's so gorgeous, it's so heavy. All right so so much better you can see it's just actually probably the perfect uh, although very 80s silhouette. Belting it in nice and tight helps define the shape and give a much nicer silhouette. And I think I've said to you before that when I'm wearing something really dark as outerwear, I want to wear relatively light underneath. I would never wear black with navy or, um, hmm, I would wear probably tan, I wouldn't wear chocolate brown with it. Though I might put a bag with it, a chocolate brown bag, if I had lighter stuff on. But you can see with a little bit of a light boot and a light leg, how fresh and lovely it looks. And then with this beautiful caramelly tan bag, this is a vintage Oriton, you can see how gorgeous that is and how it just lifts the brightness. You know, we're making this beautiful top shine underneath. 
And then I was thinking maybe another thrifted item that I found recently, I really love red and navy. So I thought a red scarf would be divine with this. So long as, I think, you leave all of your other parts neutral. So the shoe is neutral, the pants and the bag are quite neutral. So I might even do that actually. That looks kind of cool. And then undone, just pull this around to the back like this so that we get a nice silhouette at the front. In voila. And I would again just do a half French tuck there. And again, it's a lovely sort of equestrian look. You could even, if you really wanted to, which looks very French, is to have this scarf around the belt loops. I kind of like that. I think that looks cool. All right, so there is my style up of some recently thrifted items. Are you an op shopper? Have you found some treasures recently? Do let me know so I can get awfully jealous.